Hi, I'm Charlie. Uh, today we're going to solve a linear programming problem where the, uh, the problem is set up and it asks you to use the simplex method to find an infinite uh, set of solutions. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, what I have up here on the whiteboard is I, I copied the problem into a spreadsheet. And uh, up here on the left, I have the original problem. Uh, we have three constraints. X, 2x1 plus x2 is less than or equal to 10. Uh, two additional constraints below that. And we're looking to maximize z that, uh, where z equals 4x1 plus 10x2. Uh, x1 and x2 are, are non-negative. And uh, that kind of goes without saying. So this is our problem. Uh, it's very straightforward. We'll set it up with the Tableau by adding slack variables, S1, 2, and 3, to uh, remove the inequalities. And we add our z function in the bottom row, the, the negative coefficients. And that you see that first matrix there is just the standard uh, setup for linear programming. So we're going to solve it. And let's apply our standard simplex method. I'm going to assume that you know that, but we look at their largest negative value in the bottom. That's a minus 10, so that's the column we want to uh, pivot out of the matrix. We calculate our ratios, which is our B values divided by the X2 row values, and we take the smallest positive value there, and that gives us uh, this entry as our pivot point. You see that I've already highlighted it in yellow. So we pivot around it, and we get down to the second matrix, and we've driven X2 out as a basic solution by zeroing out the row except for that pivot variable. Um, and we, we follow through on the other rows. And what you see immediately is down at the bottom, we have a non-negative row. What that tells us is we've finished our simplex method. We found an optimum solution. So I've written that solution down over here. Our p-value is uh, 40. So that's the value of our objective function. And the bottom row tells us that we can't improve on it. We have our optimum answer. So what do we do now? Simplex says we stop. But it has been suggested that there are more answers, in fact, infinitely many more. So how can we find them? Well, we can go ahead and look at uh, what if we extend our simplex method a little bit and say we now have two non-basic variables, x1 and s2. I've shaded them in gray. That's the convention I'm using here. So can we change any of these variables without disrupting our solution? Well, the S2 has a positive 2 down here. So if we pivot around that, we're going to worsen our answer. But the X1 variable has a 0. So that tells us if we pivot around it, it will not change our objective function. So let's do that. And so we're going to pivot around the first column. We find the smallest ratio, positive ratio on the right that tells us we use 1.6 as our pivot value. We do that, and we get the third matrix. Um, it behaves as we expected. The bottom row stays non-negative. That means we, we are still at an optimum value. In fact, that optimum value is still 40. It hasn't changed. But this matrix gives us a second solution. Um, and the values are listed out there. Now, since we did that once, what happens if we do it again? If we go ahead and look at the same process, we've got a zero down here. We can't pivot around the two, but we can pivot around the zero again. We look at our ratios. Our pivot value becomes this entry. And if we do that pivot, what we're going to find is we go right back up to, uh, that's not a very good arrow. We'll go right back up to that second matrix. So what we found is that the simplex method, if we extend it to pivot around zero, it'll start bouncing back and forth between two values. So to see what's happening here, we can look at a, uh, a diagram where I plotted. Uh, this is uh, an x1 axis, and this is our x2 axis. Uh, the blue lines are our constraints. And if we plot those constraints, they, they appear as follows. And we're looking at a less than set on the constraints. So we take the area common to uh, the areas underneath those lines. And we get this little area here that I've hatched in green. That's our feasible solution set for the, for the linear programming problem. Our uh, objective function is plotted here in red. And I've plotted it for z equals 0. It is uh, 4x plus 10, 
4x1 plus 10x2 equals z. So that has a slope of minus 0.4, as you can see here. Now what simplex does is it, it's going to push that line up uh, as we rotate through various solutions. And you can see here graphically that what happens is this line is in fact parallel to this constraint. This actually is our second constraint. So when we move this line up, change colors here, as we slide this line up, it's going to land on top of this constraint line. But the other constraints are going to bound it from here to here. And those endpoints are about here and about here. And if we look, we see that this endpoint is 0, 04. And this one uh, is a little hard to tell, but I would suggest to you it's uh, 3.75 and 2.5. Oops, forgot to turn off my pen. Uh, if we go back to the first document, you'll see that Lo and behold, there's the one endpoint, there's the other endpoint. But what that graph showed us is that every value in between these endpoints on a, a linear basis on that line segment is also a solution. So uh, that gives us infinitely many solutions. So all we need to do to wrap this up is write down those solutions. So simplest way to do it is to write the solution as an X vector. We have two points, 0, 4, and 3.7525. I write this parametrically as shown below, where we have a t as our parameter, and we, we have to limit it. So we vary it from 0 to 1.25 to get us our two endpoints, and any value of t in between there would give you another non-basic solution for your system. So there we have it. We have our line segment with an infinite set of solutions on there, as given by this parametric equation. So that pretty much wraps up this problem. Uh, thank you for listening.